everybody it is April and I'm in my craft room today we're going to take this panel and make a rag quilt I made my first rag quilt recently and I am hooked I thought it would be great fun to take this panel take some coordinating fabric and make some squares around the panel and make another rag quilt. I'm also going to use the chenille it again around the outside. So let's get started. And by the way, if you like these types of videos, then please subscribe to my channel for more crafting tutorials. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. That will also help my channel get recognized by YouTube. All right, let's get started. This will be the middle of my rag quilt with a panel. And I've already started free motion quilting it. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see what I've done. And then I'll put the camera up as I am quilting the barn and the leaves. What I'm doing with this one is I am going to quilt around the images on the panel and I don't know if you can see but there's stitching here and around the truck and then around the pumpkins and around the scarecrow and I may do some more stitching around the scarecrow and I have two layers of batting so I was hoping I could get a little more loft, a little more puffiness where I quilted. I don't know how much more you can see. I may eventually have to try the trapunto, but I kind of want this to be a quick quilt. Not, you know, not super fast, but something that is not going to take months and months to complete but that can be done fairly quickly with some free motion quilting of a smaller space a panel is much smaller than a full-size quilt and then I'll put the ragged squares all around the outside of it You can see behind me that I have arranged on my design wall my squares for the back of my panel rag quilt. So I finished free motion quilting it and here it is. And then I wanted to arrange my squares so that I could strategically place them and not repeat any squares next to each other. This is the back of my quilt. And the way that I laid out, whoa, got an issue here. The way I've laid out the design on my design wall, it's for the back of my quilt. Now on the front, I am going to use all the same print and then I'm going to also use the solid colors of the green and the rust that I used on the back. And my plan is I'll take this printed piece, I will put a piece of batting in between, and then I will attach 
the print that's going on the front to the batting. And in order to save time for this project, I'm just going to stick with my X in on the, the block. I'm not going to do anything fancy. And then when I come to a solid piece, I'll take the solid piece, pull a piece of batting, and then attach the same solid piece to the front. And then that way I don't have to worry about a solid color touching the same solid color because I've arranged it on the back in such a way that the solid colors don't, aren't right next to each other. So that's my plan. Now, then I have to remember how I have it arranged. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture and then I don't have to worry about remembering it because I have a picture. Let the chain piecing begin. I have sewn all my squares with X's. Now I have decided this time, last time I didn't do the ragging first. This time I decided that maybe it was a better idea to snip the edges first. And the reason that I decided that was because I saw a video where someone had used a die in order to cut out their rag squares and the die had the edges already ragged. So I thought, you know what? That might be kind of cool. So that's what I'm going to do. It's a little experiment. And how I decided to do it is I don't want to go too far in. So I am at the edge of my table. My ruler is just a little over the edge of my table, so I don't tear up my table too much. And then I'm going to cut a little square at the end. I think the square that they cut on the corners or that the die cut cut on the corners was bigger, but that's okay. And then I'm just going to snip. See, and then if I get caught on that plastic ruler, and you can use a metal ruler or whatever, then I know I have gone too far and I'm protecting my material. So I don't go over where I want to sew my seam. Again, cut out the corner. And this is surprisingly fast. Of course, keep in mind, I only have 16 squares because I did the panel at the center. So there aren't that many squares in this project. And I was on house party with a bunch of friends and while I was yakking, I just mindlessly cut my material and before I knew it, I was down to the last two. If you recall, I took a picture of my blocks that were on my design wall so that when I got to this point in the process, I would remember what order to sew them in. So I'm going to refer to my picture and I'm going to start with the group of blocks going on the sides of my panel because then I'll take my blocks going across and they'll go across the whole lot of the panel and the additional blocks. I've got a leader cloth here. I'm using some Floriani thread and I had used some slick thread earlier and it did not work well, but I think it was because my machine was dirty. I see this followed by a green. 
and I have to make sure that my ragging is not on this side. So I'm going to put these, and I've made green and green, so I didn't have to worry with that. I'm going to put these like this. I'll line them up. And I'm going to sew this way so that I have no showing ragging here. Because what I had up on my design wall was the back of my quilt. So following my picture, so right here, I can see that it follows my picture. Now the next block down is a pumpkin. I also want to make sure that they're facing the correct way. So my pumpkins should be face up and then I want the ragging on the other side. So when I sew this side up, I'm going to have a seam not ragging. And I'll just continue this process for both sides. I now have all of my pieces and parts done. However, I've run into a little snag. Turns out side blocks, when they're pieced together, are longer than my panel. So I was off in my measurements. However, I have a plan. Let's do this first. I'm going to trim away this excess so I can get an exact measurement for my, my sides and my top. So I have trimmed this down. Oh, and my help has arrived. So Oliver is going to weigh down the panel for me so I get an accurate measurement. So let's measure the length of this panel. And it is 41 and a half. Now, if I put this down, so this brings it all the way to 47. So I have the difference between 41 and a half and 47. 47 minus 41.5 equals five and a half divided by two is 2.75. I'm gonna add two borders across the top and it looks like they're going to be 2.75 plus 0.5 for a quarter inch seam allowance. So 2.75 plus 0.5 equals 3.25. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a strip of this and put it across the top. So if I measure this, I've got 33, probably 34 and a quarter. Okay, this is 36 inches. Duh, it's 12 and a half inch strips, or 12 and a half inch squares. So 36 inches. So I'm going to cut my strip at 36 inches. Now I need four strips of, at three and a quarter, 36 inches, because I need to put my batting in between and then I want to secure that fabric to the batting. And then I want to rag it and I want to rag the edges of my panel. This is just pitiful. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, 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 hey. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 
my batting just like I did my squares. I'm going to put my batting down on the wrong side. Then I need to put my strip on top. And another piece of my border. And now I have to figure out how to quilt it. I'm thinking I'm just going to sew a seam up the middle. Let me go sew. Here I have two strips for the top. And I want to rag these before I sew them. Just like I did the others. Found the scissors I like. All right, so both of these are ragged and ready to go. I added my border to the top. I added my border to the bottom. I did all the ragging prior to adding them. Now I am going to add my squares. I'm going to add the border across the top. Then I will add the border across the bottom and I believe that I've determined that I do not need to add anything to the side so I'll be right back I am so close to being done I've got my top row on that is my dog sneezing I've got my bottom row on and now I'm going to add the last two rows on the side and my quilt will almost be done. I do want to do some chenille it around the edge so I've got a little bit more to go but I'm so close. I'll be right back. I have my whole quilt together see if I can hold it up here so you can see it. Ugh. Now the last step is not necessary but I like to do it. I've got some chenille it and I have tangerine and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it all along the outside edge of my project. I got a string here. And I'm I'm actually going to put it just below the ragging. It will just secure the outside because I need to sew around the outside edges anyway. But it'll add a little fuzzy texture to it too. Alright, I'm gonna go sew on my chenille it and then I will throw this thing in the washer and I'll be back to show you the finished product. Okay, here it is. And I know you can't really see the whole thing because it's pretty big, but you get the idea. I'm really pleased with the way that this turned out. Thank you for watching this video. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more crafty videos with sewing, quilting, card making, and other types of paper crafting. Have a great day, eat some chocolate, and be kind to everyone. Until next time, bye. The way that I've laid out my does. All right, so. All right, so that's what I say. All right, so. Got it. So if I roll this over, hold that, would you? I added my.